Jaime and Lozano, welcome to Token Theater Friends. I'm so happy to see you again. How's, how's everything going? Hola, Jose. Thank you for having me. Uh, everything's going great. I mean, um, you know, it has been like a very hard couple of years, mainly for all of us, like, but we do arts for a living. Uh, but trying to come back, you know, trying to move forward uh, and uh, trying to, I wouldn't say like come back to normal. I would say like trying to find a new normal and trying to uh, to make a, 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 a bigger statement than, than before, you know, like trying to, to tell our stories louder than before. Even when the pandemic started back in 2020, you and I were in communication because you were constantly dropping new music videos and new songs. And all, you know, I was like, how does he keep working? So what gave you the energy and the inspiration to keep going and creating while the rest of us were like, we don't know what to do? No. I, I didn't know what to do actually either. I mean, and, and even today, I, I don't know what to do. It was really hard. I mean, every, every day, till today, every day is, 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 is like a new challenge. I mean, to be honest, there were days that I, I didn't want to, to wake up and I, I just wanted to stay on bed. And there were other days that I felt like really creative. So I think that the pandemic, taught us that we need to take one day at a time. It's not like we can plan a lot, you know, it's not like, oh, in two months or in six months are gonna have this and this. Uh, it's just like one day. I mean, I, I have been always like that, like, like always like taking action one day at a time, uh, but the pandemic definitely come to, to, reaff to reaffirm that, to confirm that, that we, we need just like live what, what today, I mean, what, as, as Jonathan Larson says, not, not day, but today. So just do whatever you are meant to do today. And um, we were very lucky to have a, a community and friends and people, I mean, even like yourself. I mean, we were, I remember that we were texting each other, like, how are you? I mean, just, just to know how, we, how, how are you? I mean, it was like really hard times and just knowing that there were other people on the other side of the screen or on the other side of the phone, just, I mean, just asking if everything was okay, that was enough to keep us like alive, you know, to knowing that there were people like interesting and uh, that they were, uh, you know, like trying to take care in some way of us. Um, and uh, thanks to that, like thanks to a simple text or even thanks to a friend that they help us to record music, to do videos. I mean, it's not like we were all alone. It's, it's like the only way to make things happen, it's uh, working together as a community, as a family, and uh, as artists and, uh, and just trying to, to create a community. And, and um, you know, that sometimes it's hard more when we are, uh, a diverse community that we are not like, you know, people that usually has more open doors in this industry. So you just need to find your family and uh, and work together. I mean, that's the only way to make it happen. I took that quite well, Jaime. And before we talk about your music and every project that you have coming up, I have to ask you during the pandemic, knowing how your mind is always trying to create new things and learn new things, did you pick up any new skills, like te pusiste de panadero, te pusiste de jardinero. <laughs> Did you learn something new that you didn't know how to do before? Uh, definitely, I, I I have been cooking more lately. Yeah, that that's, and I, I, I realized that it's a, this is a, a passion that now when someone asked me, if you were in an artist, like a, a composer, a writer, what would you do? I, I, I mean, I would like to, to, to be a chef. That, that's one of my answers now. Now, uh, and actually, I mean, maybe one day if, if I had the resources, I, I, I would like to open a restaurant or something like that. But you know, but usually before, because we were all the day out in rehearsals, usually you, we didn't have the time to be at home and cook and spend time together. You were just like having lunch, like everywhere, you know, with, with, 
in the way to the other rehearsal, in the way to an interview. So now that we have been like in this lock, lockdown, like 24 seven at home, we have uh, opportunities to, to find um, new passions, you know? And I think definitely cooking, Cooking is an art, uh, and and definitely I have found my way to to learn a little bit more about it. And my wife, um, she 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 doesn't cook the the kind of food that I like. She's more he, she's way healthier than me. So I like 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 meat and all you know all this very Latin cuisine. So that's why I also was obligated to cook a little bit. But yeah, but I, I mean I'm really enjoying this. Entonces Florencia hace ensaladas y tú enchiladas. Ya, yeah. yeah, exactly. Florencia makes salads y yo hago enchiladas. So, okay, now, now I have to ask Jaime, what's the Jaime Lozano specialty? ¿Qué plato te sale así como que hasta tu esposa quiere dejar la ensalada to eat your food? No, I, I love meat. I, 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 I love meat in all styles and kinds. Uh, I'm, soy carnívoro. Si, si, si estuviéramos aquí juntos ahorita te tiraría una mordida así de que ah, I love meat and I love like 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 a red meat you know like uh, I have a passion for like barbecue and grill and all that um, and that's something that came um, you know when you are far from home I think this is related with 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 art in what with who we are because when you are far from home you 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 try to find ways to connect with so definitely something that we do a lot in the north of Mexico, in Monterrey, is this kind of grill, barbecues and all that. Uh, so it's a way, uh, I always joke with, 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 my, with my wife about, um, uh, about being, when we buy a house, the first thing that I'm thinking about is, does he have a backyard that uh, so we can have uh, barbecues? I mean, that, that, that the first uh, the first thing that we need to know is we're gonna buy a house one day. Is he gonna have a, a place where we can like have barbecue? So, and that's a I mean, but that's because we really, we, we really miss uh, like our home, you know. And we're trying to create this home away from home, and uh, one way to connect it it's through our culture and our food, you know, our music. That's why my music always had this reference about Latin music and Mexican music and cooking is about Mexican food. And uh, all, I mean, everything is, is about that, about what we missed, you know, about what we are. I guess it totally makes sense, Jaime, that you are a good cook and that you enjoy cooking because your music also is such a beautiful mix of the right ingredients. Like I, I was listening to uh, I was re-listening to songs by an immigrant before talking to you. And I love that every time I listen to, to this album and to your songs, there's like something, como, un poco, como una pizca de, de un chilito que I hadn't found before. So can you talk about, as an artist, as a composer and as a musician, how do you know, Jaime, when the song is ready? Like, like como una sopa, como un caldo. I mean, to be honest, it's, to be honest, everything is about honesty. <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's like, um, when you're writing a new song, it needs to come from your heart. It needs to come from honesty. I, I don't write, even I write fiction and, and I, I, I write about things that haven't happened to me personally, they need to be related with me in some way. It's, it's something about that happened to a friend, to a friend of a friend, something that I read and I felt connected with. It's something that is related with me. Uh, and then when I, when I start writing, uh, I do a lot of research so I can feel even more connected with. I do a lot of music research. I start like listening. Okay, I, I want to write this song using these music styles. So I start listening a lot of like, let's say cumbia or norteño or jazz or salsa or even musical theater, whatever is the music that I think is gonna influence the song or the show that I write in at the moment. I start like listening a, a lot about that music. I start reading a lot about whatever is the subject or the background around that. And the ones that I have all that like material and information, 
I just put it on the side and do my thing. And uh, I, I guess the heart tell like, it just tells you when it's ready. It's like, like painting something. Like when are you gonna put the last stroke? I mean, you, you could like, you could keep painting and painting and adding colors and adding, but it's more, you're never gonna be completely satisfied with something. I mean, that's a fact. And more in musical theater, that is an industry when grinding is regrinding. I mean, they're gonna, I mean, people, producers, collaborators, directors, and yourself always are gonna ask for a regret. You're all gonna want to, oh, I want to regret this and this. But I think the heart, you need to, to be able to listen to your heart and know that enough is enough. I mean, that's, that's enough. Because in other, in other way, if you keep thinking, I think something, you need to find the right balance be, be, between thinking and feeling. Because when you're thinking, you want to change and regret and add more details. And you're, but sometimes trying to be smart doesn't help to the storytelling and doesn't help to the process. And you need to find that balance between trying to be smart and really feeling what you're doing and trying to, 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 to do it with your heart. And your heart never is wrong. Even when it's wrong, never is wrong, you know? You have, you have to take decisions from your heart. And even when the decision was wrong, if you made it with your heart, that was the right decision in that moment. You know, there's a line, I don't remember exactly what is the, the exactly words, but in a, maybe you're gonna, re, you wanna remember that line. It's in a Sunday in the, in the park with yours in, a, in the song, Move On. The choosing, maybe the choosing was, no, Maybe the choice was wrong, but the choosing was not. It's something like that. You know, just making the decision in an honest way is always gonna be the right decision, even if it was, if it was a, a wrong decision. It's a, a curious paradox, but I, I think that that's very real. And, and speaking of balance, Jaime, like there's something really beautiful about your songs, especially in songs by an immigrant where you're telling some really heart-wrenching stories, some really sad stories at times about leaving your family, the people you love, leaving tu tierra behind. And yet at the same time, the songs are so gorgeous and so beautiful. So why was it important? Why is it important for you to be able to balance that beauty with sadness? Because like, I mean, you could perfectly do songs that are depressivas y like, you know what I mean? Like for people to be crying, but there's this like gorgeous balance, even in some songs, there's um, como una cumbia, como una salsa, como un merengue, while the stories being told are, are very sad. Yeah, I, I realize, I mean, this is not, this is not something that I come, with, uh, come up with. It's like, if you listen, for example, salsa music back in the 70s, 60s, Ruben, Bla Ruben Blades, they are singing about really deep subjects political subjects, immigration, uh, I mean, like Pedro Navajas, like killing, like uh, gangs. I mean, they, they're like a lot of different subjects. And I don't think that, I think it's a cliche sometimes that it's, it's not in our culture, salsa and uh, festive music and cumbias are about any kind of subject. Could be about love, could be about, uh, missing someone could be about anger. Uh, could be about everything. So salsa back in the time, it was about about everything. It, it can be a love song, but it could be about uh, some political issues also. So I think that uh, all kind of music is able could be able to tell any kind of story. I mean, it's not like one thing is against the other one. It's more about the way, if you're being honest with what you're telling and you connect that with the music, I mean, the story is gonna come true and someone is gonna relate with that story. So I don't think that just because the music is up-tempo or because the rhythm is like, like a little bit more like spicy or however you wanna call it, uh, that is only exclusive for happy subjects, let's say. No, I think that we need to, it's, it's, like, it's life. I mean, life is complicated. 
sometimes people ask me, oh, why your music is so complicated? Or why your music is so hard to sing or to play? I mean, that's life. Life is not easy and life is not only sad and life is not only laugh. I mean, there's always a mix of everything. We're not only good person. We're not only bad person. I mean, sometimes we have like a bad thoughts and sometimes I want to, I mean, why not? I, I think that, oh, I want to, to curse and I, I have to, oh, I hope I want to kill that guy or I want, to, but we don't do it. We don't do it. I mean, the action is what defines us, not the thoughts. Even if we think about something, it's the action what defines us. So I, I'm trying to put that action in the music and in the words. Even the thoughts could be different. The action is what defines us. And having all this mix of feelings and music and an action, uh, I think that made it make it very interesting. So both in your personal life and your creative life, you have built this gorgeous familias. So when you're writing the songs, do you already know who you want to have as the singer when you're going to record the music? I, sometimes I do. Yeah, I, I could say that most of the time I, I write thinking on song. I mean, I have someone like my wife, she is a, who is a beautiful, talented, one of the most amazing storytellers I know. I'm definitely, I, I have, um, when I write a song, many times she she's in my mind, like I know her voice. I, I know the way that he's gonna tell the story. I have all these other people that I like to call my family, like Mauricio Martinez. Like I have worked with them for such a long time. It's usually composers said that when they have someone in mind, they are like, putting the song in a box or they are like, like you know, there, there's some composers that say that. And I think in, on the other way, I mean, having these people in mind, they just make richer what I'm trying to do. And that doesn't mean, doesn't mean that I'm gonna limit, limit my song to be performed just by them. But just being, it, it's like telling a story. When you're telling a story, being so specific made the story very universal when you are adding all those details about place and time and character, I feel in that way about performers. When you are having, when you have this performing in mind and being so specific about his voice or her voice or her storytelling in some way that make, what made them unique, it's gonna make that sound universal at the same time. And people is gonna relate with that song, not only because the writing, but also because the performing, the performing, and people is gonna to want to perform that song because they listen in that song in that person. And then it's gonna become universal. So yeah, I, most of the time I have someone in mind, actually even I don't know that person, but I like to listen to, to see a lot of like a YouTube videos and uh, okay, I'm gonna study Sara Ramirez now. Uh, what? And I'm gonna have this person in my mind or, or Raul Esparza or Mark Anthony or, you know, and I'm thinking of, on, on real people um, because I think real people are characters or, 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 or the other way, characters are real people. You know, the only way to, to find truth in characters is because th there need to be real people. So Songs by an Immigrant is storytelling on so many levels. Like the album itself is a whole story, you know, like it doesn't follow just one character, but it follows a theme and it tells a story of what it's like to be an immigrant. So, you know, like wherever you're from in the world, you will understand this story, this journey. And yet each song is also a journey in itself. So. I wonder, Jaime, like, and I know that the album per se isn't an official musical, but will it be a, a musical at some point? I mean, th this is a question that, I, I mean, a lot of people ask, and, and that is just like, like, like giving me a validation in some way that, that it, it needs to be some kind of musical. Uh, we don't have any plans soon and uh, as you say every story every song is more like a song cycle and every song when i'm writing a song 
I'm always trying to write a mini musical in some way. I think that a song needs to work in that way. It needs to have a, a, its very own journey. And that's why um, sometimes those, those songs feel like complete in some way. Uh, but yeah, I would love one way to, to have the chance to see it. I mean, we're doing these concerts now when we are performing songs from the album and from the upcoming album, we're working on a second volume right now. Um, and, and I think I, I think what, what made, made them feel like it could be on stage in a musical, it, it, it's that honesty. I, 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 I'm not trying to be like pretentious or something, but, but I really, I really, the only thing that I know that I have is that I write from the heart. I don't know if I'm a good composer or a good writer, I don't like to say that, but I know that I am honest writer and I always try to put my heart in what I do. Even if it's a good or a bad song, it's gonna be an honest song. And I think that people, people realize that and people hear that on the songs. And that, that's why people, is, people relate with those songs. So hopefully, uh, producers are gonna like find that interesting, and maybe this could be on on a on a theatrical stage soon. Like, yeah, why not? Yeah, I would love that definitely. Or at screen, like you know, like it could be like a beautiful like mosaic kind of movie. So you you just said right now that you don't think of yourself as a good composer, and that you don't think you're like you know like the cat's pajamas. And yet, Jaime, on April 15th, you are going to have an evening of your music of songs by an immigrant at Lincoln Center. One of the beautiful things about you seeing your name, I mean, at least for me as a, as a Latino and as someone who admires your work, is that it really made me think, this is kind of a long winded thing, so bear with me, Jaime. I was thinking about just like watching the, the, the new West Side Story, the Steven Spielberg version. We see in that movie how they are displacing Latino immigrants to build the Lincoln Center. So it's a story about displacement, about kicking immigrants away. And now we have you joining this sacred place really for musicians and for artists where the songs of Irving Berlin and Rodgers and Hammerstein and Cole Porter and all these people who conform the great American songbook have had their pieces played and their music played. So Jaime, you went from an immigrant to becoming a part of the great American songbook. And I, I, I'm so happy for you. And I wonder, what does that feel like for, for you? I, we're taking over Lincoln Center back now, you know, as Latinos. As Latinos, they kick us away once, and now, I mean, just in this in this uh, series, in this American Songbook series, I have the honor to be part of this series of concert with many amazing immigrant artists and uh, two other Latinos that I really admire. That is, um, they're having concerts other days. It's Gabby Moreno, that she's an amazing Guatemalan uh, songwriter. I actually had a collaboration in, in the album Songs by an Immigrant uh, with her. Uh, she she made me the honor to sing one of my songs, and she's having her her very own concert as part of this American Songbook series. And the other concert is Linda Briseño, this a, a Venezuelan uh, amazing uh, music producer, musician, singer that she won uh, a Latin Grammy a, a few years ago as uh, best producer. She was the first woman to get the best producer. Uh, award, Latin, Latin Grammy. Um, and uh, I mean, just knowing that we as Latinos are having the honor and at the same time, the responsibility to be on this very prestigious stage and in this very prestigious theater as, uh, and organization as is uh, Lincoln Center, um, it, it feels, it feels definitely it feels good. I mean, knowing that Hamilton has its very own concert a few years ago as part of the American Songbook series. I mean, you know, uh, so being part of putting my name among that list 
feels good, but I wish that could be many more, many, many, many more Latinos as myself and as, as Gabby, as Linda. I mean that our stories deserve to be told and deserve to be heard. Uh, not only be here for our community, it's not only for us, it's for, for the world. I mean, the world need to know what we have, that we have something to say. And uh, it need needs to be exactly in the same level of priority as any other stories. There's no story that is more important than the other ones. All stories are important. And uh, we need to have that chance to tell those stories. And knowing that Lincoln Center is open uh, its doors to artists like myself and all these immigrant artists, I think it's just about time. I think uh, if they, if back in the days for different reasons, they kicked Latinos out and they dis, uh, destroy whatever homes and houses to create these, I mean, we're not gonna destroy Lincoln Center, but we're gonna create we're gonna create community. We're gonna create Latino art in that place. You know, we're gonna build over them, uh, and we're gonna be telling our stories. And I think that is important. Yeah, así es. ahora. So the concert is sold out. So congratulations, man. That's like oh, incredible. Gracias. That's fabulous. So what can people who will attend? What does a Jaime Lozano show look like? What can they expect? Because I know you are known for having all these incredible guests and your band is just like spectacular. I mean, we're going to have, it's, it's an all Latino, Latine, Latinx. I don't know how to say anymore. It's, it's so, so I, I, I love, I love that we're having this conversation about that we don't know how to say Latino or Latine now, because that means that people is talking about us. So that's good. So we're gonna have an all Latino, Latine, Latinx, Latin band and line up. People uh, like immigrants, like myself, or first, second generation, son or daughters of Latinos, Latinas, Latine, uh, performing. I mean, we, we are all Latinos. So, when we say all Latinos, that means celebration and party. That's a fact. So uh, even as you say before, I mean, even some of the of the subject of the songs are are very deep, like uh, immigration, like uh, crossing the border, like uh, losing or missing your family. Uh, I think that uh, at the end, our stories need to create a change and need to call for action. So it's not about uh, depression or about uh, being sad. It's more about calling to action and doing something. And the only way to do it, it's uh, like fighting and pursuing our dreams, you know? And that's what we're trying to do. I mean, the, the concert is gonna be a celebration, a party of, not only Latinos, because we like to include others. Even sometimes others don't want to include us. I think that we as Latinos, I mean, you know, in our countries, we are so welcoming all the time. So if you don't like us, we like you. I mean, we want to include you. Yeah, you are gonna, we're gonna be part, you're gonna be part of the family. It doesn't matter where you're from. And I think that is important. I mean, we are open to tell our stories and welcome everybody to listen to those stories and just have a celebration and have a fun and meaningful evening because I think that is important. I mean, there's always, even if, even if it's a party, if, if, if a, a celebration, there's always a purpose and there's always a meaning behind all that and I think, uh, that is important and everything's coming from our heart. And I, I think I, I'm speaking for all the people that is gonna be with me on stage. Uh, we are a familia and we are always singing and playing and dancing and speaking from our heart. So speaking about all the people that you're gonna have on stage, Presume on Jaime, quien es tu lista de invitados? Tell us about your guests, it's incredible. But 
I feel so honored that I have and such an amazing uh, uh, lineup of all these Latino performers. I mean, we have people like 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 my close family, familia, like like my esposa Florencia Cuenca, my hermano Mauricio Martinez, people that they have been singing with us in another concert before, like Javier Ignacio, there is a wonderful Venezuelan performer that he's a part of the company, Broadway's company, company right now. Uh, we have people like uh, Sharin Pimentel, that she was uh, part of uh, the revival of West Side Story. She was the lead in that show. Uh, Andrea Burns, an amazing performer that I, I had um, admired for such a long time. She was just seen in the West Side Story in Spielberg's movie, and she was uh, part of the uh, In the Heights and uh, On Your Feet, uh, Broadway companies. Uh, who else is joining us? Nick Edwards, an uh, amazing, amazing singer, also uh, Latino as all the others. Um, who, are, who am I forgetting? Um, uh, who, uh, Eden Espinosa, that we, we just connect a few, a few, like a couple of years ago. And uh, uh, it's funny that uh, her family is also from Monterrey. Um, you know, it's like if we are all connected in some way, uh, and I just love that 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 how how small is the world and 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 the Latin and the Broadway community, uh, and we just need to make those those um, links stronger. You know, we have so many things in common. Uh, sometimes it seems that we don't what we have a lot of things in common and we're trying to stretch those uh, connections. Um, who else I'm missing? And we have amazing musicians. I, we have, I mean, for example, the, the bass player for Mac, Mark Anthony is playing with us. You know, it's like all these amazing musicians that they play for this great uh, Latino, Latina uh, superstars. They join in us to play and have this celebration with us. So we are, uh, very happy to have all these uh, amazing performers with us. So if you have tickets for April 15th, you're going to La Fiesta de Año. So have a have a blast. So before uh, before your concert at the Lincoln Center, Jaime, you're doing. I was surprised to realize that you had done yet another song cycle. You have a new song cycle called Desaparecidas that you're going to be performing at the Public Theater's Joe Pub, right? If I'm not mistaken. Yeah, yeah, you're right. Uh, on March 28, Monday, March 28, we're having this concert. Uh, it's a new musical that I'm writing uh, with my wife, Florencia Cuenca. We are doing an all, right now we are doing all Spanish songs. All the songs are in Spanish. The show is supposed to be an English book with all Spanish songs. Uh, Desaparecidas means the missing ones. And it's about uh, these very unfortunate uh, facts uh, that happen, and it still happens. It's still happening, you know, very unfortunately. Uh, in, like not not only in Ciudad Juarez, but around the world, about these femicides. Uh, um, so we we interview a lot of people from Ciudad Juarez. Uh, we were doing a lot of research and getting to know people from there, and based on those interviews. Uh, we start writing these songs and this story. Uh, it's not a so, it's not a show about the actual femicides. I mean, we don't want to focus on that. I mean, we want to focus on uh, the stories of these amazing uh, women, you know, like fighting every single day to have a better life in in cities like Ciudad Juarez. You know, being like superheroes, like all these. Uh, women uh, like you know like trying to raise their their children going to work trying to to give a better life for 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 uh, their families so we are focusing on on these stories of these women and and uh, like talking about is like issues like immigration and uh, uh, pol political issues like uh, social issues and all that uh, and we're very excited to have this concert and tell uh, this is a story that also needs we, we need to to hear because they say that um, I don't know what is the 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 the, 
the say in English, but un pueblo que no conoce su historia está condenado a repetirla. You know, uh, 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 what, 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 what would be that, the English translation of that? Yeah, basically, if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. Yeah, it's I like mean, a cycle. Yeah, exactly. So I, I think uh, that that we need to talk about all kind of subjects and issues, and and I think this is important so we can learn. And um, I, I very I'm very blessed to be the only uh, the only guy, the only man in the whole team. We have a director and a book writer and my wife and a choreographer. That they are all women. Uh, and I'm just trying to be a, a good ally, you know, uh, just trying to put what 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 I what I love to do that is telling the story as uh, stories and writing music, trying to put that on service of them, you know. I mean, they are they are taking the lead in writing this show, and I just try to 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 be the best ally that I can, you know. This is a pretty that, although I haven't listened to it, so please send me some songs, Jaime. Uh, it's actually on Spotify. It, we, 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 we release an EP that is on, on Spotify. Oh, okay. So, so I'm going to share that with you. Out. Yeah. But this is, you know, like just knowing that this is a success and that's something that you're working on made me really think about you almost going back to your roots with Tlatelolco. And it's like you are mm. preserving la memoria historia de Mexico, right? Like things that you don't want people to forget. So being so far away from Mexico, again, what does that mean for you, you know, to be able to be a chronicler de la historia mexicana desde un lugar uh, lejano de tu casa? I mean, th that's the only thing that I can do. I, I mean, there's people that they, I mean, people write in newspapers, there's people that they write in Twitter, <laughs> there's people that they, yeah, you know, there's all kinds of people. And what I can do is, is write songs and write shows. So uh, even I try to, to be like open in like in social media and all that, I don't get very political. Even I, I, I say what I think, but I don't really get very political on, on, on social media and uh, because I do it through my writing. You, do, you know, my songs are about that, they're about femicide in Ciudad Juarez, about a genocide in Mexico City, about uh, people in, in, in cages, about people uh, dying trying to cross the river, about people uh, trying to find an, a better life in a, in a new country uh, far away from, uh, from their family. I mean, I, I'm not political, like, in, in, in out there in social media, but, but I think I, I, I'm very specific about that, that kind of stories that I'm trying to tell. And uh, I, I know how to do it through songs. I know how to do it in my writing. And that's what I'm trying to do. Uh, of course, I also have other kind of songs about good subject. I mean, about other more happier, happier subjects, you know, uh, but definitely uh, I think it's, it's my mission and my responsibility to use my art to tell our stories, the good side and the not as good side, and, and try to make other people listen to them. You know, other people is it, it, the only way that, that, that I can use what I know and what I love to do in service of, of the world, in service of a country, of my community, of uh, you know, of my, my Mexico. You have, you have spoken beautifully. And like, I was reading uh, some uh, Mexican articles about you performing at Lincoln Center and you have spoken so beautifully and with such gratefulness and a lot of uh, humbleness about what Lean manuel Miranda's mentorship meant to you. But now how I meant that you are an established composer just going up and up and up on the rise and you will have the opportunity to be a mentor to young writers, what would you tell people who maybe see themselves as you did, you know, growing up where you're like, I don't know if I can become this. Like, I don't know if this is something that can happen for me. I don't know if this is something that can become true. What would you tell all those kids, niños y niñas in Latino America who want to write songs? Yeah, it's funny because I, 
I never dreamt about being an artist or being a, a writer or living in New York City or being on Broadway. Uh, when I was a kid, uh, I mean, my, my family is from a from a small town in Mexico. We didn't have a lot of money. So it never happened to my mind that I could be able to reach, actually to go out from my from Monterrey, for example. I was I like in my comfort zone and I was just there like trying to do my thing. Uh, and just one thing led to the other one, you know, it's, uh, so I think that it's very important uh, to do things. I think that's more, more about more than dream about doing something, but just do it. it. It doesn't matter what it is. It doesn't matter if you want to write a song, go and write a fucking song. You know, just write a song. It doesn't matter that you don't know how to do it. Just write a song. If you want to play the piano, sit on the piano and play the piano. If you want to cook something, go to the kitchen and cook something. I think that every, everything in the world is about doing things, more than planning, more than dreaming. Uh, all that is just, you know, very abstract. And it, it's never going to mean anything to you do action. So I think uh, my best advice could be whatever you want to do, go out there and do it. Amen. Okay, so Jaime, you have Songs by an Immigrant at Lincoln Center on April 15th. You have Desaparecidas at Joe's Pub on March 28th. What else is out there that I haven't realized you're doing? What other projects are coming up? Where can people find everything that you're doing? Uh, we're doing we're doing a lot of things. That, that we're calling uh, the, the Public Theater and uh, Lincoln Center our second home in New York City because we are uh, we are very 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 grateful with them. We're doing besides the American Songbook concert. Uh, I don't know when this is gonna be out, but March 12th, uh, we're having a family concert. I mean, just my wife and, and me singing songs. Uh, uh, it's a very different concept more than, than songs by an immigrant. It's, it's more like a family concert that we're doing at the atrium for Lincoln Center. And then also we're having a virtual concert for Lincoln Center for a beautiful, beautiful series that they call Lincoln Center Moments. That is for people, uh, uh, with dementia, uh, this, this very special concert, and that's a virtual concert. And we're having Desaparecida, and then I'm going to Washington to the Gala Theater April 1st with an amazing artist that I love and I admire so much, uh, Miguel Angelo, and we're doing a show there called English with an Accent, that is a, a musical theater dance piece uh, that we grow together. Uh, and we're gonna premiere there at Gala Theater uh, hoping to bring it back in the fall to Lincoln Center, actually, too. Uh, and I'm writing like two, three, four musicals at a time. I'm working on the second volume of uh, Songs by an Immigrant. I'm working on a new album for my wife called Broadway and Spanglish, that we're taking Broadway songs and uh, putting like an Spanglish language to it and doing like Latin American arrangement, like mariachi, salsa, uh, so we, we are playing and having fun with those songs and uh, what else? I mean, um, just just trying to stay creative and trying to find a way that our stories uh, can be heard, you know, and I'm really grateful for, for people like you that is part of this familia and is part of this community. Even even you are not in, in, in New York City, uh, we feel you very, very close. And, and we're very grateful for, for you and everything you do. Uh, like try, like uh, helping us to amplify, amplify our voices and writing about our shows and training people, like, you know, training uh, uh, people of colors to be critics and uh, to be able to write about their own stories. I mean, we're really grateful for everything that you do. And I just, um, I just wanted to take the chance to 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 say it uh, open that that uh, I mean you make us you make us stronger and thank you for pe to people like you that we are still doing this and thank you. Gracias. Gracias. Gracias a ti. Palante, Jaimito. Palante. Thank you. Thank you so much for joining us. It's siempre es un placer, Jaime. 
el, el placer es mío y eh, siempre disfruto mucho platicar contigo. And uh, I know that there, there will be many, many more chances virtually and all, all, uh, all, also in person. En persona ¿no? también. En persona, con una cervecita, un cafecito o algo. Y me haces tus enchiladas, entonces. ¿Verdad? <ríe> Amén, así será. 